Welcome, everyone. Happy New Year. Here we are in 2024. I'm so delighted to be here. I'm so excited to be here starting the first masterclass of the year. I know some of you attended all of the ones I led last year. And, you know, last year was about following your soul's guidance. And this year, I mean, it's always about following your soul's guidance in a way. But this year, really the the sentence that came and, and it is the title of my first book but it's like answering your inner calling in 2024 that's not the title of my book the in 2024 part but it's like answering your inner calling in 2024 that's the master class series and this one today is specifically about you choosing your extraordinary goal for two for 2024 for this year and I want to make sure, you know, at any point, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat and I will answer them if I know the answer. And if not, I will point you in the right direction or share what comes, you know, what's coming through from our beautiful Oversoul gathering here together. And, you know, last year it was kind of a test doing the master classes. I'd done them before, but I had not done them as a series throughout the year. And I was, it was such a year of transformation for me last year, as many of you know, you know, relocating and other things. My youngest graduating from college. It was just like endings and beginnings, endings and beginnings, endings and beginnings. And these master classes I thought taught last year were were as, as helpful for you as they were for me to teach, but it wasn't so much. It was kind of like I had the first master class, a three-day series. So I think altogether there were eight. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> And then, then it was kind of like in the moment, like, okay, my soul is saying to do one now. All right, I'm going to do this masterclass. That's kind of like how my whole year was. This year, it feels, I heard a teacher talk about this, like last year felt like a year of becoming for me. And I share this in case this resonates with you. And becoming can is amazing and just miraculous and awe-inspiring and it's also exhausting and terrifying at times and there's times where you feel like you're going backwards or you're stuck so that was like the year and this year is more a year of being right like really being who I've been working on becoming and of course becoming I don't mean that I'm a different person in, in the sense that there was anything wrong with me before. It's more that like releasing, releasing, right? Always releasing what isn't us. So I'm delighted that, you know, this year, it was before the year even began. It was like, oh, okay, this is about answering your inner calling, right? Answering the calling from your soul, from the divine of what you're meant to create this year, who you're meant to be, become, release, all of those things. So let's just take a few cleansing breaths together. And just feel the earth underneath you. I'm not going to do a very long invocation. I already opened the field and the space before we started. And maybe let's bring our hands over our heart. And I call, I welcome everybody's beautiful soul. Whether you're here live or you're watching the replay. Whenever you're watching the replay, right, I invite your beautiful soul here, your soul's wisdom, your soul's unconditional love, your soul's medicine, right? You each have a unique, beautiful medicine to contribute to the world. And I welcome everybody's guardian angels, archangels, I welcome all of the divine beings, especially because I work so closely with them, the ascended masters. I welcome those ascended masters who lived a human life. They understand what it means to be a human, a divine being having a human experience. They know how heroic, how heroic it is. And so I welcome those ascended masters who are here as allies, as mentors, as mirrors, as guides, as blessers, I'm hearing. They're here to bless us. These ascended masters from so many spiritual traditions and the ones that I'm just being called to name, of course, always Mother Mary. She is one of my overlighting mentors for this lifetime and I'm sure for many lifetimes. Welcome beautiful Mary Magdalene, Isis and Hathor, 
and White Buffalo Woman and Kuan Yin and Green Tara. And I welcome those divine masculine masters, including Ascended Master Jesus, Maha Avatar Baba Ji, Krishna, Buddha, and so many others. There's so many. We welcome them here. And we welcome your enlightened ancestors who went through so many initiations as well, who had their extraordinary goals that they committed to. And that's how they created their legacy of love. And that's how we are creating our legacy of love. And we welcome, of course, source, divine, God, goddess, creator, creatrix of all life, who I've just been so connecting with as the divine mother. We welcome her grace, her blessings, her protection over our circle. And my prayer is that it bring delight and clarity fuel and grace and action that if fuel your action so that you birth all those amazing extraordinary goals this year and so with that we bring the palms of our hands together bow to each other in our own heart and open the space with a namaste namaste everyone and so i want to ask if anybody wants to share actually before that let me give a little overview so what are the things we're going to talk about today i'm going to talk about because the other thing that keeps coming up is having this be your best year yet yet right we're not saying this is going to be the best year ever because we're always going to keep getting better every year right better but the best year yet what it means and what it doesn't what exactly is an extraordinary goal what is it not why is it so essential why are we so often so scared of committing to even making an extraordinary goal? I mean, let alone committing to it. Like it's normal. It's normal to have those fears. We're going to really break that down, normalize it, name it. So it loses its power. Those fears lose its power over us. And then, you know, what are the qualities that are going to be needed and required to Commit, right? We're on day, what, 11 today, one, one, one. I love that. And I did not consciously plan this. This was the day the master class landed on. And then I was like, it's the new moon and it's one, one, one. Like how amazing. But we're 11 days in. There's 365 days in a year. So that's a long time. And, and the goal, one of my extraordinary goals for this master class is that this is fuel for the whole year. It's not just like, wow, that was really cool and exciting. Uh, next week, what was she talking about? I'm so defeated. I can't commit to it. Forget it. Like, no, this is like we're playing the long game, right? It's a marathon, not a sprint. And so, and then I have some invitations for you as well. I'm probably forgetting something else to share, but that's what we're about today. And so for those of you who are new to connecting with me, my name is Lisa Espinosa. I should have probably started with that. I'm a spiritual career coach and priestess. Those are the labels I'm using right now because it's really hard to come up with a succinct, a concise way to describe yourself. But what does that mean? As a spiritual, I'm a spiritual coach that focuses on helping my clients share their unique medicine through their career or their life's work, career slash life's work. Now, of course, this radiates to your whole life. It's not just your career, right? It's like your creative projects, the way you, you're in relationship, the way you are in relationship with your emotions and your body and, and all of it. But that's, you know, my medicine. I just, I love, you know, since I was a little girl, I always dreamt about, you know, how am I going to help the world? I mean, what am I going to do? How am I going to help people? Like that was my, my prayer, my longing. It was part of what I came here to do. And I'm sure for many of you as well. And so let's get started. Hey, we're going to begin. I have a cool little PowerPoint for us. It's not a packed one, so no worries. I used to cringe when I was a teacher. I don't think I said I used to be a seventh grade teacher for like about 10 years in the Chicago public schools. Shout out for public schools. And we would have these faculty meetings. And whenever there was a PowerPoint, I was like, oh my gosh, because it was tended to be very long and very tedious and very boring and filled with way too much unnecessary information. So I want you to know that I have a deep prayer that's that's not what this is. Right? Whenever I did, in fact, I resisted doing PowerPoints for years in my classes because I was like, 
so sick of them. So um, that's my goal for you. So as we start to listen to the teachings, you know what? I'm just going to start. I'm not going to talk anymore. I mean, I'm going to continue talking, but let's go ahead and start. That's what I'm hearing right now. Start. And I know there's always the initial, can you see this? Um, can someone tell me if you, if you can write it in the chat, if you can say, yes, we can see it. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Nope. Just your zoom page. Okay. So let me X out of here. We know the drill. Here we go again. Let's see if that works. Can you see it? Okay, now I can't see the chat preview, come on. Well, I can see that a lot of you are telling me things, but here we go. Yes, yay, great. Okay, perfect. Whoops, let's go back. All right, now you go away. All right, here we are. Choose your 2024 extraordinary goal. Here we go. We are getting started. This is my legal notice. I do not diagnose, prescribe, perform medical treatment. You can read it on your own later on. I'm sure we don't have to go over that together, but just wanna make that clear. Here's a little bio. I am not gonna read it to you, but if you wanna learn more about me, you can go to my website. There it is in bold, and you will learn more about me as we teach the class, right? So as I teach the class. Okay, so I started every master class last year with this quote, and I'm gonna say it again. A master masters the basics. I don't know who said it, but that's why I wrote unknown. So all the foundational tools, the foundational teachings are what create mastery. We off, our ego wants us to think, oh, it's gotta be these really complicated, like hard to understand teachings. That's what makes me a master. No, what makes us masters is mastering the basics. For example, knowing our soul, your soul loves you unconditionally and your soul is always talking to you. That's a, a basic level teaching, yet it's so easy to forget it, right? So that's very important. Now I added my own little thing. Mastering the basics requires implementation and practice. You can take all the master classes in the world and learn amazing foundational things. But if we don't implement and practice, it does not create transformation and change. I know this is very obvious, but sometimes it's not, right? We need to, we need to hear these things. I need to hear these things repeated over and over and over, right? It's like, I know they give this example a lot, but it's like if, if you're trying to lose weight and you just attend these master classes on this amazing eating plan and amazing exercises and you're so inspired and you're like oh my gosh this makes so much sense this is amazing but then you never implement anything it's not going to create the change right so same thing okay so mother mary has kept telling me oh i do want to say i do recognize that a lot of you are in winter right now and there's like snow and all of the wintry stuff so at first I was going to do like, okay, let me do wintry background, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't because I'm in Mexico. And part of the reason I moved here is to have a blue sky and have hummingbirds and enjoy 75 degree weather today. And so I'm just sending you sunshine and blossoming. And also it felt like it goes with this 2024 is a year to come out of hiding. It's like, we are like the, the ever blooming flower, right? This is what mother Mary kept telling me. This is come out of hiding, come out of hiding. And so you do take that in whatever that means for you, right? And there's no, you know, comparison needed. And so what I mean is for some of you, this might, you might hear this and you might be like, oh my gosh, yeah. Like I totally have been in hiding mode. And for others of you, like when I heard this, I was thinking, well, I've not been hiding exactly. You know, I've been doing all these Facebook lives. I'm on YouTube live every week. I mean, there's so many ways that I have not been hiding. But Mother Mary was saying, everyone has some way that they've been hiding or being in the shadows more. And this year is like, nope, come out. Come out and be in the light. Come out and be in the, your soul spotlight. That is what the world needs. And that is actually what you need. Okay. 
And 2024 can be your best year yet if you choose it to be. So we have free will. We could say no, right? And so what does having your best year yet does not mean, let me welcome the beautiful orchid medicine. I miss my orchids. That's something I couldn't bring with me to Mexico. So I'm still looking for some here. But anyway, so that's the orchid medicine. Thank you, orchids. Um, what does it not mean? It doesn't mean that you will never have pain this year, that you're not going to make mistakes, that you're never going to experience failure, that you will never experience disappointment, sadness, doubt, and I could have gone on and on and on, right? So again, we we hear best year yet, and we, we kind of, I think sometimes many of us, I know I remember years where I was like, I'm not going to set any goals. Like, it's just, you know, um, I was just kind of uh, tired of the the way it was commodified and the way it was explained to me and and the tr and the truth being that every year was quite a stretch and it did involve times when i was disappointed or sad or things didn't go how i wanted them to go but then as i matured and as i learned more i started to understand oh wait that was all from my ego's perspective of what the best year yet would be what does it mean it means that you commit to your soul's vision for your life. You are blessed more and you bless more. That is the best year yet. Again, you are blessed more and you bless more. You experience more transformation than ever before. You love yourself through all the growing pangs and range of emotions. Now, and of course, yes, I didn't write this on here, but of course you experience success, synchronicity, miracles, joy, bliss, adventures, excitement, your dreams coming true. All of that is true, of course, as well. But these felt like really important to, to name, okay? Because I think people tend to think with best year yet, like, oh yes, like fireworks and rainbows and all of the things. And yes, all of that. And you know, they're also going to be the other, the other part, right? Okay. So what is an extraordinary goal? I mean, just, uh, thank you, Sophia, for sharing that. I just read your, my relationship with goals is wounded. I feel actually really scared of concretizing and setting goals. That is so normal. Sophia, thank you so much. You are so not alone. And even for me, knowing all of this, I still get scared. I mean, it's still, you know, at the end of last year, I was so, so, you know, still grieving a lot of things. Not that I'm done, obviously. That's a lifelong journey that I also had that fear. So thank you for naming that. And I'm going to talk about that today because that is really important. And when we get to that, I'll ask more people. I'm sure you're not the only one who's scared of setting goals, who has fear around that. But let's talk about what an extraordinary goal is. A goal your soul, not your ego, chooses for you. Committing to this goal would lead, will lead you on your path of awakening and enlightenment. It will bless you and the world. It will stretch you past your comfort zone. It will build re resilience. It will create confidence. Okay? Now... Oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to keep going. Okay, the key here is that your soul is choosing it, not your ego. And there's nothing wrong with our ego's goals. I mean, sometimes there could be, you know, it could lead us down the wrong path, but I'm not here to say the ego is bad. The ego is just a program that has very specific, predictable rules. And we're going to talk about that. And if we just follow that program, if we just follow those goals, it's just going to keep us attached to that program. And when I say program, I mean like a computer program, right? A software program. Why choose an extraordinary goal? So why, even if we're scared, like Sophia shared, right? So uh, courageously, why would we choose it? Because committing to your extraordinary goals is the only thing that can bring you long-lasting happiness 
and fulfillment and bring your greatest contribution to the world. I should have put contributions. Because what that means when we set our extraordinary goals and we commit to them, in essence, you're saying, I'm committing to my soul's vision for my life. And your soul is the most loving, understanding, patient, wise, creative, fun, funny, joyful, compassionate mentor you could ever have. So even though, yes, we can kind of beat ourselves up about our progress, you have to remember that your soul is not like that. Your soul is not like, all right, you know, you have this goal and you better fulfill it because if you don't, you're terrible and I'm going to be disappointed in you. That's like all human stuff. That's not our soul. So what gets in the way of achieving your extraordinary goals? And in future either master classes or in that private Facebook page that I'll invite you to, I'll talk more about when I wrote this question, I really thought I was going to start talking about parts. Well, our parts that are afraid of this and our parts that are afraid of that, but it really went deeper into what's behind that. But we're, we're going to talk about the parts as well a little bit, but what gets in the way? Your ego structure gets in the way, which has a very predictable, but nonetheless relentless program. So, you know, it's very helpful to think of the ego structure like a matrix, like an architecture, like a, a architecture that we all have, unless we are already enlightened and ascended, and none of us are yet, we're on that path, right? Or we, we, we still have egos, we're still here. We have that, we come in with that ego structure, and it has a program that's very predictable, very, very predictable. That's good because that helps us. But it's very relentless, very powerful. And, and a lot of humanity just believes that that's true. Okay. So what is the, the and the way I'm talking about this program, I'm going to narrow it down to three specific, you can call it mantras, that the ego is always feeding, always, always, always. Okay. Even if we're not hearing it, it's there in the background. It's in the background. It's in the background because well, it'll make sense. Your, I called it your ego's mantra triad. One, you're separate from source, God, divine, universe, whatever word resonates with you. Two, what you need is outside of yourself. Three, you stay safe by staying the same. Don't step out of your comfort zone. So these three, this is like the software of the ego. Right? It's always you're separate from source, you're separate from source, you're separate from source, which of course feeds the, so everything you need is outside of yourself. Everything, you know, look outside of yourself. Don't look inside, look outside for what you need. And along with that is never be satisfied, right? Like, and if you read my blog, I wrote how, you know, Course in Miracles says that like one of the mantras of the ego is seek, but never find. So our ego loves to keep us seeking, 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 looking, 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 look outside, look outside, look outside. And also you stay safe, stay safe by staying comfortable, stay safe by staying where, where you're, it's familiar. And if you're here, I know you have, um, you're not in the grips of this completely like me, right? I'm not like, I know we, we're, We've evolved enough in our spiritual journey that we we have we know in some level, yes, I am not separate from source. We know at some level for sure that, okay, everything I'm looking for is inside of me. The outside world is a reflection of my inner world. In some ways, I'm sure all of you have stretched past your comfort zone, whether it's in leaving a job and starting your own business or share joining a class, your comfort zone might be even just joining a master class like this and sharing, right? And it's like, whatever it is. So I'm not suggesting that you we're all blind to this, but what I, what is really, really important is we can't fool ourselves and think, oh, we told, I already know that I'm, yeah, I know I'm one with source. Well, if, 
if we really knew that, if we were really embodied in that, well, we would already be enlightened and awakened and ascended. Right? So this is really important to know because then you start to understand that the goals the ego creates are all a, all come from this place. Well, you should achieve this because if you achieve this, then you're going to be a good person and it's going to validate you, right? All, all the things that go with it. And it's really important that we just keep, that we like normalize this. That, oh, that's right. My ego's always going to be, is, is like playing this song in the background. And especially when you decide, when you're like, hey, I want to follow my soul's goals, my extraordinary goals of my soul. That immediately triggers a like alert, 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 alert. Wait, that's, you need to stay safe. You need to stay the same. And remember, why is the ego so committed, right? You know, how so committed to these mantras because your ego is actually afraid of us. Our ego is afraid of us following our soul's guidance. It's afraid that it's going to be the end of the ego. And it's right. So it's protecting itself, right? So we want to normalize. We want to know this because this is going to feed into all the fears, right? And I read Deborah's comment like, yes, yeah, same for me. No matter how much I accomplish, I of course I still get scared of setting goals. And I'm going to share one specific one that I was scared to share because it uh, connects with you all. <laughs> you know that I was really, really resisting. And so now as opposed to the ego's triad, then we have your soul's mantra triad. You're one with source, God, divine universe. Your soul. Always begin within. So again, this is the foundation, right? The basics before we get to the, well, how am I going to achieve the goals? What are the action steps? That's actually the last part. It's like, wait, I'm one with the divine. I'm one with my soul. I start inside of me. And then your soul also says you're safest when you follow me. So when we think about the fears that we have, which seems so real, we, we want to remember, yes, part of that is our trauma. Part of that is our childhood. Part of that is all of that. But also a big part of it is the ego that's always saying, it danger, 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 danger. Stay the same. Don't step out of your comfort zone. And I want to be very respectful when I say this, that for those of you, those of us who've experienced real, you know, like trauma, real situations where we were in danger, where boundaries were crossed, where there was abuse even, you know, that wiring can get even a more mixed up right? Because we hear our ego saying that, and then it reminds us of the trauma we had, and then we can get just paralyzed and frozen. So there's like a, a journey of untangling that. And so that's part of these masterclasses is I want to, we want to name it, normalize it, bring it to the light so that we can start. And then when we do the meditation, the inner journey, so that your soul can start to help you untangle. Like, oh, of course, your soul also will let you know that's not a safe situation for you. Let's not do that. Or that person is actually not for your highest good. Let's just wave by and stay over here. Our soul, of course, will help us with that. But there is um, a level of illumination, a level of activation, a level of inf being infused by our soul's light that is necessary as we keep moving forward, right? And you and I know last year I spent a lot of time talking about the most important thing you do every day, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today, is receive from your soul, receive from your soul, receive from your soul. Not connect with your soul. Obviously, when you receive, you're connecting. But I really want you to use that word, I'm receiving from my soul. What are you receiving? You're receiving 
these, it's like, you're saying, this is going to be my operating system. This is going to be my default. I'm receiving my soul's light codes, my soul's activations, my soul's illumination. So that that's the voice I hear the most. Yes. The ego's voice will always be there. Always be there. Always be there. I can look at it. I can have compassion for my parts that can get sucked into it, but I come back to my soul. Okay. And I'm going to pause after this because I really want to check in with everybody. So this is the divine paradox of committing to your extraordinary goal is that achieving the goal is actually the least important part. It's the awakening that committing to this goal would, will initiate that is the real treasure. So I really want to talk about that and break that down. Okay, again, that's a divine paradox. Remember, the divine is full of paradoxes. You know, we die to be reborn. We slow down to speed up. We give to receive. I mean, it's full of paradoxes. We, we step into the unknown where we know nothing and we know everything. So, so we want to start to understand like, oh, that's how the divine works. It's these beautiful paradoxes that make sense. Even though to our ego mind, I don't because the ego doesn't get it because it's not meant to get it. And so this is one of those. And notice I didn't say making your extraordinary goal. I said committing to it is actually the least, you know, achieving it is the least important part. Okay, so I'm going to stop here to go over that and check in with everybody. Okay. So what does that mean? Because sometimes I say that to people and they mean, well, then that's a trick. So we're not even really trying to, to reach our goal. We are trying because if we're not trying, it's not a commitment, right? So whatever. So if anyone here, and thank you so much, everyone for, oh, yes, hummingbirds and sunshine. Thank you. If, if you have a sense of what your goal is already, you know, share any, you're open to sharing them in the chat, please share them in the chat, even if it's not fully formed, but you know, so, uh, um, whatever it is about, you know, like if you're sensing like, okay, this is, you know, my goal. Yes, Deborah, exactly. And, and the other thing is that you've got to remember your soul has a curriculum for you. You, you, there is a level of awakening and enlightenment that you said before you came into this life, I want to reach this. And so there's a curriculum, just like when you go to college or school, whatever schooling, and they give you a plan. These are the lessons we're going to work through, right? That's what's going to create mastery. And so as you commit to the goal, yes, it's the person you're becoming, but it's, it's the, and we're going to go over this. It's the sticking to it, despite the, the resistance and what comes up for you. That is the expansion, not through hustle energy. Like I'm going to kill myself, and, you know, meet this goal. I mean, there are, there are seasons of that for sure. I've had those seasons, but it's more, you know, there's a point in our spiritual journey where it's like, no, I'm going to love myself through all the disappointment, through all the mistakes I will make, through all the times I will feel like I'm not making any progress. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to let my soul keep loving me and I'm going to keep going. So Jill is saying, income goal 88K and working on my th three special projects, including writing my second book. Yes, right? And so that is her extraordinary goal. Now, this is what happens as soon as we set an extraordinary goal. The ego is like, all right, this is the extraordinary goal. This means if you don't reach it, you're a bad person. You're a lazy person. You didn't work hard enough. There's something wrong with you. The ego wants to just sabotage it immediately. Because remember the mantra, you're, which is basically you're not enough, you're not enough, you're not enough, you're not enough. And so we all have to realize that, right? So <laughs> thank you, Jill. Yes, I have a goal I've been working on for four years and I have another goal that this is my seventh year working on. Yes, thank you, Deborah. That's beautiful. And, and I do want to encourage everyone because my goals vary. 
But I do want to encourage everyone to have a measurable goal as well. Let's release the fear of that, right? So, you know, Jill shared 88K. It doesn't have to be about money, right? It could be whatever it is, finishing a book, a certain amount of income, having a certain amount of clients. You know, maybe you're like, I want to fill my practice. My, my filled practice would be whatever it is, 22. I'm just making that up. And you're like, that's my goal, right? So it's measurable. So at the end, you can measure it. Not judge yourself for it, but there's a measurement. That's the marriage of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Maureen, I have a deep meditation in Egypt telling me, help them. Oh, they've forgotten how beautiful they are. I'm trying to figure out who they and what to do. Beautiful, Maureen. So that's a great question when we go into our journey. Like what's beautiful? So what, what does that look like? What is the goal, the extraordinary goal you want me to create for myself that's going to help my goal this year is to make choices which are inspired by joy and which inspire joy in others. Yes. And so if your joy is something like that, like I know for me, one of my goals, I have some very measurable goals and then I have other goals like that. I have, you know, one of my goals this year is really to be, to let service lead me, like being in service, which I know might seem like, well, aren't you already doing that? But I mean, I was, of course, in a lot of ways, but it's like the joyful service, like that, like almost like trusting that as I, this next level of trust that as I follow my soul, follow what my soul, kind of like what Maureen said, you know, follow what my soul is saying, do this, even if my logical mind is like, but how is that going to work? And how am I going to make money if I do that? And how, you know, to hear that, but keep but do it anyway. There's something about that. And I'm I'm trying to, I'm coming up with very specific, like, well, what does that look like? What does that mean I do? What are the things I don't do to, to do that? Let's see. Sophia, I want to birth myself as a spiritual leader. I want to create community. That's beautiful, Sophia. So then your question, you know, with your soul is like, how, what's my first step? How do I start to do that? How do I start to, to build community? And I, I mean, I can think of a hundred ways, but you know, that again is when the ego will want to come in, right? And be like, try to take over the goal. Well, you need to take all this training and it needs to be like a hundred people in your community. And, you know, if you're going to do it in person, you have to have a, a perfect place. It has to look gorgeous and beautiful. And, you know, our ego will just make it so complicated. Where in reality, your, your soul, I'm just using this as an example, Sophia, because you shared that. Thank you you know, your soul might just be saying, hey, just, you know, just start a weekly thing in your home once a week, or just do a live, you know, once a month, you know, on Facebook, or just, you know, go to that yoga studio and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I'm just, you know, your soul will lead you in simple ways. Trust divine timing. So Suzanne, that's beautiful. And what you're going to want to do is, and for everybody, you know, you can fill in the blank with yours is how does that feel? If, you know, if I go through a whole year of trusting divine timing, you've done these exercises with me before, Suzanne, like, how do I move through the world? What do I tell myself? What is my self-talk? What do I do? What do I don't not do? What do I eat? What do I not eat? What do I, um, you know, who do I connect with? Who do I just kind of don't feel guided to connect with? You know, just make it very grounded. And the only reason I bring food up is because that's been a big, that's a, a to nurture my extraordinary goals. I've been going through once again, a food cleanse, right? That I was not planning on going through, but my soul was very clear that there was something about me um, noticing my urge to eat sugar and just breathing through it, <laughs> right? And I don't even eat that much sugar, really. It's like, and just, and, and noticing everything that comes up, you know, my parts that are like, I deserve it. Or my parts that are like, it's not fair. Or my parts that are like, I don't want to feel this. Let's eat this. Or my parts that are like, I have a whole Christmas gluten-free vegan Christmas cake in the freezer. I had to freeze it because I couldn't eat most of it because I started having these problems. And so my parts are like, wait, you should just take the cake out of the freezer and have a little piece. And so it's like feeling all of the craving, all of the urgency of wanting to have that and just breathing through that. I mean, I can't say it's been fun, 
but I'm feeling so much more space inside. Like, oh, it's not going to be forever. But my soul is saying, let source feed you. Let source feed those cravings. <sighs> Wasn't expecting that to be part of my goals. Uh, abundant, self-sustaining income brings joy, not stress when I think of it. That's beautiful. So then Deborah, I would be like, you choose the amount of what that is right? And you don't have to tell us, but you tune in and like, what would that be? What it, It's different for everyone. What is in a joyful, abundant, self-sustaining income for me? Ask your soul. My income to come from what is absolutely true and honest to my heart's calling in 2024. The goal is to follow through and not give in. Yes. Create circles. Yes. Oh yeah. Sophia, I think you're a Sophia's Aren't you a Sophia circle leader? Am I making that up? But wow, that feels like one way. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's beautiful. Yeah. Kimberly, I want to be more present in the here and now. I want to reduce my anxiety and show my daughter how to handle stress in healthy ways. Oh, I also want to be more healthy and lose 20 pounds for my pre to my pre-pregnancy weight. Those are amazing, Kimberly. And if they make you shake a little bit, I'm not just talking to Kimberly, everyone here, you know, your cho. So this is the thing. You want to choose a goal that makes you a little nervous. If you're just looking for a goal that makes you just feel awesome, it's probably not the goal. There does, there will be some level of like, right? Because remember, your soul is always stretching you, but not like to the point where you're just like oh, oh, terrified, not that, right? But not if it's just like, oh, this just feels so lovely. Yes, this is my goal. Then it's like, okay, that's lovely. That might be one of your goals. But it's not the, the extraordinary goals are always stretching us, right? They're always stretching us. And I love your goals, Kimberly, that there's some very measurable ones, right? And then I want to be more present in the here and now. And so for you, same as I was telling Suzanne, it's like, what, how do I measure that? You're going to ask your soul that, right? Like, what are the practices? And maybe it's by season, by quarter, you know, that will help me be more present in the here and now, right? And maybe your soul will say, well, every day meditate for five minutes, right? I'm not your soul, so I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but whatever it will be. And show my daughter how to handle stress in healthy ways. Absolutely. I have three daughters and, you know, they so resisted, you know, I they were like teenagers when I was really connecting with yoga and meditation and all the things and so that wasn't the age where you want to, you know, teenagers, right? They're by nature, independent thinkers, and they are not at the place where they're like, oh, I want to do everything mom does. That is when our kids are very little. At that age, they weren't. And I would, I just would hope, I mean, obviously I would talk to them about it, but I really wasn't like, hey, let's sit here and meditate together because they just were not, you know, they were in their own world with stuff. But now it's so amazing to see them doing it, like it, it was just being in my presence that opened all these things. And I didn't even know, you know, there was also a, a whole bunch of other things going on. But anyway, thank you, Kimberly. Teresa, to be aware of money coming in and out. Yes, keep a detailed budget. Be aware of opportunities to bring abundance and financial ease and flow into my life. Yes. And now I'm working with a coach. One of the things I'm very excited about is I'm working with two new coaches. Well, one was a coach I had before, but I'm reconnecting with her. And one of them, you know, her business name is Manifestation Babe. <laughs> and one of the things she talked about is our language around money. And so she talks about, she never says spend money. She talks about circulating money and being very mindful about how her money's circulating. So anyway, Teresa, when I read yours, I was like, oh yeah, like how is our money circulating, right? Okay, so... Let's go ahead and go into our meditation for inner journey. I have a couple of more things to say, but. And so take a few cleansing breaths to, to select it. Oh, yes, attendees. Thank you so much, Jill. For everyone who is a participant, if you make sure in the drop down menu, like Jill is saying, say share, what is it? To select everyone, because if not, I only see your comments, not everyone else. 
And so I know everybody loves seeing each other's comments. Now, of course, if there was a comment you wanted just me to see, but I'm really terrible at that. I've had classes where people do that and I don't read that is just to me and I blurred it out to everyone. <laughs> so it's just a lot to keep track of when you're looking at the at the screen. But yes, thank you, Jill, for that. And so um, let's go into this inner journey. And first, I want to just really thank you for your courage to even be part of this masterclass, right? With all of the disappointments we've had sometimes or the way we've judged ourselves or a world that is led by the ego, right? And has this energy of like, achieve, 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 you know, and, and can make us feel like we're always behind. It's very radical to step into a space of like, wait, I want to choose my extraordinary goals. And why are they, and I think I say this in a, in a slide ahead, it's like, why are they extraordinary? It's because they're out of the ordinary. They come from out of the ordinary world. They come from our soul, from the divine. And your soul would never, ever, ever lead you to choose a goal that it is not already preparing to, already sending you all the resources, support, help, synchronicity that you need to achieve it. Okay, so let's go ahead and close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And feel the earth underneath you as you bring your awareness to your heart. And maybe you even bring your hands over your heart center. And in your heart, a beautiful light, like a flame on a candle, lights up this golden light. And this golden light fills your heart this golden light fills your heart. And it is the light of your beautiful soul. And it is the light of your soul's blueprint for 2024. The light codes, the architecture of your highest, your best year yet, 2024 being your best year yet. And so as this light in your heart radiates, it starts to radiate outside of you and it, and it forms this like ray of light coming out of your heart onto the ground before you. And in your inner, with your inner eyes, in your inner world, you see this golden path light up, this beautiful golden path. And you're so excited here on this new moon, this golden path opening that represents 2024, the beginning of 2024. And if you happen to be watching this at another time, trust that you're watching it at exactly the right time for you. It's showing you the golden path of whatever year you're in. And so the golden path of 2024. And as you look at this path, you're now going to step onto this path. Step onto this golden path. And walk on this path that's leading you somewhere. You're not sure yet where, but it's leading you somewhere. And as you walk on this golden path, you come up to this beautiful temple, this crystal temple. And on the entranceway of the temple, there's a beautiful door that has your name engraved in it. This is your temple. This is your temple of extraordinary goals for 2024. And so read that on the on the door, like, ooh, this is your temple. Notice the letters. Notice how they glitter. Notice the colors. Notice how the door is, like, happy to see you. It's like you can feel it's like the atoms are vibrating, like, she's here. He's here. Yes, they're here. 
And so as this door feels your presence, it opens, welcoming you, saying, step in, you beautiful daughter, beautiful son, beautiful child of light. Step into your temple of extraordinary goals of 2024. Step into this temple. And so you step into this temple that is your temple. And as you step in, the first thing you notice is there's a shower of light coming over you. And there's these little angels, little tiny little angels. I was going to call them fairies, but they said, no, we're little angels. And they're just clearing your auric field of any leftover debris from 2023. And it kind of, it almost looks like they're clearing spider webs. They're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and some of you, it's just a little bit. Some of you have some kind of big ones, but they're like, it's okay. And they're just like brushing, 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 brushing. Like, nope, nope, nope. You don't need this. No, no, no. They're clearing it. Ooh. And some of you are, have other people attached to you that want to come in this temple and your beautiful soul and your angels are saying, no, no, no. This is your temple of extraordinary goals. So any person that's attached to you, we're very lovingly sending them back to their own soul, their own angels. Go back to your higher self. Go back to your soul. This is your temple of extraordinary goals. And so the angels are clearing, clearing, clearing. And you keep moving forward. They're like now like kind of like just giggling so happy as they lead you to this beautiful courtyard in the center of this temple of your extraordinary goals. And as you go into this courtyard, there's all these beautiful flowers. And some of these are flowers you've never seen before. They're these beautiful colors and beautiful scents and they all look beautiful together. And you notice that these flowers, there's some that really are shining and your soul tells you these flowers, the ones that are the brightest, those are your extraordinary goals for this year. This is the garden of your extraordinary goals. And there are those flowers. And, and so just walk around and notice like, oh, there's some that are just, like they're just calling your name. They're like, here we are. We've been waiting for you. We know you've been preparing all this time. And your soul is... You know, she appears next to you. And I'm just using the pronoun she for right now, but you're please know your soul is beyond gender. If the were if the pronoun she doesn't work for you, you replace it in your mind. It's just what's coming in this moment. And so your soul, she's here and she's she's walking with you and she's saying, You're not behind. You haven't fallen behind. You're not slow. You haven't done anything wrong. This is exactly where you are meant to be as you step into this temple of your extraordinary goals for this year. All of it has been preparation. All the endings, all the beginnings, all the so-called mistakes and failures, all the disappointments, all the joy, all the bliss, all the courage, all the commitment, everything, everything, everything. And so as you stand there, your soul stands before you and she looks into your eyes. And as you look into her eyes, and in this moment, I just see your soul looking like you. And, you know, for those of you, if you're a, a male, if you identify as male in this class, you know, maybe your, your soul appears as, you know, in that male form, but you're looking into your soul's eyes and she's looking into your, your eyes and you just feel so much trust. You feel how your soul loves you so unconditionally. And in this moment, your soul is transmitting this, this code of, um, I'm trying to find the words of like you knowing that your soul is always proud of you. You've never let your soul down. And so as you receive that transmission of, of this pride that your soul has of you. Your soul asks you, do you trust me? Do you want me to choose the extraordinary goals for this year for you? You have free will, your soul reminds you. And your soul reminds you, I will love you whether you say yes or no. 
I will not love you more if you say yes. I will not love you less if you say yes. I will not love you more if you say no. I will not love you less if you say yes. Your soul's love is unconditional, infinite, and never changing. So there is no pressure. It is up to you, my daughter, my son, my child. And so your soul asks you again, would you like me to choose your extraordinary goals for 2024? And if your answer is yes, and she's saying, it's okay if you're nervous, it's okay if you're scared, if it's, it's okay if you're like, but how am I going to achieve them? She's like, you don't need to worry about any of that. She's just asking, would you like me to choose? And if your answer is yes, tell her yes, and she's going to go walk through this garden. And she's looking through all the flowers. And she's choosing the specific ones for you. She's like, oh, this one is one. This one is going to bring her so many blessings and it's going to help bless the world so much. Ooh, this one. Yep, this is the one. She brings this little bouquet of flowers back to you. Maybe there's, for some of you, might be one flower. Maybe it's two, three. Maybe you get a full bouquet, but there's some that are going to be highlighted in this moment. And so as she hands you this bouquet of flowers or this one flower, ask your soul, which flower do I start with right now? And pick that one flower. Even if you're like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what it is. Pick the one. She's like, this one, my dear, this one. This one is going to be the one that's going to bless all the other extraordinary goals. And so as you put this other flowers down in this beautiful um, vase that a guardian angel is holding, you're holding now this one flower. This is your most extraordinary, beautiful, extraordinary goal. This is the goal that is like, I'm hearing like the master goal, the goal that's going to bless all other goals. And ask your soul, what is it? Tell me, what is this goal? And if you have your journal, write it down, whatever comes, however clear or vague it may seem, what is it? And as you're receiving, even if you're not receiving specific words, the flower is lighting up and it's infusing your cells, your atoms with all of it, the whole blueprint. You're receiving it right now, even if you don't see it yet. It's like, oh, okay. Now it's okay if your parts, but like, how, how? That's okay. There will be time for that. But it's like right now, just receive that activation. And... But also ask, do not be afraid to ask specific questions. What is this goal? And in this, and for some reason, your soul is really working in quarters right now. So for these first three months, what are the most important steps for me to take and not take? And I apologize. I'm just coming back in earth terms. I realize this masterclass is going to go over. We are almost at time. So if, if anybody needs to leave, I totally understand if you can stay, awesome. Also, <laughs> this will be recorded. So your soul, this is the question your soul wants you to ask. These first three months from January to March, what are simple action steps? Three, let's ask for three simple action steps that your soul is wanting you to take. And what are three steps, three, this is how she's saying it, three steps not to, actions not to take. For some reason, this is really important. Action steps to take, action steps to not take. What I'm hearing is that for some of you, you might think, oh, I got to do this and this and this, and your soul saying, no, 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 simplify. 
You actually don't need to do that. That worked in the previous years, but no, that can be released. These are the yeses, these are the noes. So maybe that's the way you write it. Three yeses, three noes. And if you're hearing this and you're like, nothing's coming to me right now, that's okay. Your soul is giving you the answers. It will be clear in the right time. So from January to March, what are three action steps, simple action steps you want me to do to work on this goal? And what are three things that you're like, nope, you don't need to do those. Let those go. Okay, I'm going to go through some questions. Remember, this is recorded. So if you feel like I'm going fast or you're like, I needed more time, come back and you will have more time. Okay, what's important is to ask the question and receive the light codes from your soul with the answers. So the and I'm just in a channeling space right now. So I'm just going to I don't want to stop too much because the questions are pouring forth. So hold on. What is the yes? What is the no? Let's just take a few breaths together. Got it. Okay. What are my three biggest obstacles? Your soul wants you to ask that question, not to scare you, not to overwhelm you, to bring it to the light and to have clarity. Again, I hear our soul, our oversoul saying, we think these are the obstacles, but actually these are the obstacles. So, right. So ask that question. What are the three biggest obstacles to me committing to this extraordinary goal? The three biggest obstacles. And then what are my three biggest strengths? Or I'm going to use several words. You see what resonates. What are my three biggest strengths? What are my three biggest powers? What are my three biggest strengths? What are my, my three biggest powers that will help me stay committed to this goal? And again, remember, if you don't hear the answer, it's it's your your soul is infusing you with the answers, even if you don't hear them yet. Okay. And then we're going into divine assistance here. So ascended masters, guardian angels, archangels, they're stepping forward, your enlightened ancestors, and you're asking, who are my three biggest allies? And we're not talking about human form. That, that's, that'll be another. But before that, divine beings that are your allies, what are my, who are my three biggest allies? Mentors. Mentors is a better word. They're saying more, more appropriate. Not that the other one was inappropriate, meaning more appropriate to how they're going to be helping you. Who are my three biggest divine mentors for January, February, and March? So I'm um, speaking of divine beings. Maybe you'll hear my guardian angels or Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael or Mother Mary Isis and Hathor or Jesus, or who knows? Maybe you'll be like, I don't even know their names, but I, I got this sensation of this but they want that question asked, welcome these mentors, the divine mentors that love you unconditionally and are uniquely qualified, they're saying, to help you, to mentor you in staying committed to this beautiful, extraordinary goal. And then you're asking, you can ask about your human allies. Who are the allies in the human world? Your mentors, allies, helpers that are meant to support you. 
And maybe some will be people you don't even know yet, or it might be people you already know, but just kind of see. Specifically for January, February, March. Okay, and we're winding down. I think two more questions. I'm gonna try to formulate this question. It's like sometimes they show me the words all out of order, but it's like, what will my biggest, but I'm gonna say it and then if I have to rephrase it, I will. But it's something like, what will be the biggest blessing I will receive? from committing to this extraordinary goal? What is the biggest blessing I will receive from committing to this extraordinary goal? What is the biggest blessing I will receive from committing to this extraordinary goal? And I believe the last question, I think this is the last question. What will be the biggest blessing I offer the world? How do I ask this? What will be the biggest blessing I offer the world? No. What will be the biggest blessing I will offer the world? because I committed to this extraordinary goal. So it's something like that. I'm just seeing this image of like, you're gonna receive this blessing, you know, whatever you got as the answer. And then you're going to be able to give the world this blessing from your commitment to this extraordinary goal. This blessing, this contribution, this impact, this gift. Receive all the answers in your heart, whether you're aware of them consciously yet or not. And your soul stands in front of you, these beautiful three mentors, divine ascended master mentors or angels or, you know, divine beings. And as we welcome your soul and higher self to integrate all of this activation, this guidance, across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. Your soul looks at you and says, you are here to be the answered prayer. You are here to be the answered prayer. You are here to be the answered prayer. And so your prayers will be answered. You are here to be the answered prayer. And so your prayers will be answered. And so just receive that final blessing from your soul. And your soul reminds you that this temple of 2024 extraordinary goals is has been anchored in. And you can come back and visit it at any time. Continue these conversations. As you step back through the courtyard into that first room where you got that little shower with the little angels. And so now these different little angels are coming and they're just, they're just sealing. They're like, okay, let's seal her aura. Let's recalibrate the chakras. They're just preparing you to emerge and re-enter your world. So they're very like loving, doing all of this. Just let it happen. They're just like rushing. Hoping to anchor in all of the, the guidance that came through. 
And as you step through the doorway, you come back to that golden path. You come back to your heart. Take a few breaths, feel that flame in your heart that will always be there, remains there. And we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other in our own heart. And we close the inner journey with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So clearly I underestimated how much time I was going to need for this. So I am going to keep going because I want to give you all the content. I probably will need maybe 10 to 15 more minutes, but I know I had said an hour. This is good for me to know for the next time. And so I understand if you need to go, I please no worries. It will not disrupt anything because it is a webinar, but I'm just going to stay on and just do the couple of other slides and just kind of like really wrap it up so that we end in a good way and it'll be in your recording. So, um, man, my third eye is like, whoo, just like really like throbbing. So I want to check in with you before there's just a couple, just a little bit more in the PowerPoint but like, if there's anything, for those of you who can be here, thank you, Deborah. Um, chat, just if there's anything you want to share, you know, it was very interesting to me. It was, at first I thought it was just going to be like, okay, we're just going to receive the flower. That's why I thought it was going to be shorter. Like you're going to receive this flower and then you'll get the guidance later. But then it was like, whoosh, like it felt like this. So it was like, no, we, we need to really be in this, this temple space together and grounded with some specifics. And it's okay if some of you didn't receive the specifics yet, you receive them, they're in your heart, they will become clear. But it was very interesting of like, what your, the three action steps to do, three not to do. I found that really fascinating. And then, you know, well, obstacles, there was that. And also the, I mean, you know, once I get out of the space, I'm kind of like, what did I say? But also the, what was the, Oh, your allies, right? Your your divine being allies, your human allies, and how you will be blessed and how you will bless the world. It was very. Um, I felt like th there was definitely an a downloading of a blueprint, a three month blueprint for you, whether you're conscious of it yet or not. Oh, I love that. I don't know if it's Laura or Laura, but I actually saw two emanations of my soul, an older woman and a young girl. That is beautiful because yes, our soul is obviously ageless, but that is so powerful. So really connecting with both of those. Laura, okay, beautiful. Laura Ramirez, yes. Um, yeah, I feel, you know, when I go into the invitations and I tell you about the private Facebook page, I feel like we're going to do more with that temple of, I didn't know we were going to go there. You know, I don't script out my inner journeys, but so when we're going on the path, I was like, hmm, are we going to go to a grove of trees? Where are we going? And then I was like, oh, a temple. And then I loved it. It was like, oh, it's your temple of extraordinary goals, 2024. And so just like some of you have done those priestess trainings with me, where we work with the priestess temple, you're each your own. I feel like this is going to be one to keep revisiting, keep anchoring in with, right? Keep tuning into even holding those flowers. So I know Sophia, you asked that question. You said, I have a tendency to keep things floaty and not narrow down what the goal means on the level of my soul. If you see what I mean, I totally see what you mean, Sophia. I so understand. And so it's like, you know, the, that will be your prayer, right? To ask your soul for support. So that's so insightful of you to know about yourself, right? Like I have a tendency to kind of keep this floaty, beautiful. So help me ground it. Now, what can happen when we have parts that keep us floaty, then we can have another part that is totally the opposite end. And it's like, I want the whole plan and the blueprint and give me 20 steps to do and da da da. Because almost it's afraid that I'm going to become floaty, right? So know that there's going to be a, a balance, right? Floaty is not always bad, right? There are going to be some things that maybe are a little looser and that's okay. I have some goals like that, that I'm still kind of like, mm, not exactly sure, and then there's those that are really anchored in. And I think that's why for everybody listening, that's why it's like, um, 
your soul was saying, let's do this in quarters. It's the year, but let's do this in these cycles of quarters. So, uh, Sophia, I don't know if you or anybody else received any specifics on, okay, what to do, what not to do. What are the obstacles? You know, for I usually when I do this, I don't get as many answers for me because I'm kind of holding the space and there was a lot of like uh, downloading that was happening. But I knew for mine when I asked uh, obstacles, it was like, oh, it's all me. <laughs> the obstacles are all me. <laughs> it was like me, meaning, you know, my old thoughts or all that stuff. <gasps> Ooh, up level to 100K, which your, <laughs> which your parts are not happy about. That's how you know, Jill, it's the right one. I totally, I totally understand. I have a similar thing for me in my business. <laughs> but I was like, wait, what? I haven't achieved this, but now the goal is this. But yes, beautiful. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, you can keep sharing on it, but let's just do one of, just finish this. Um, we're almost done with the PowerPoint. Just want to make sure. Okay, we went over that. And I might have said everything already. So let's just, um, so, but just to kind of finalize this. So for example, Jill, since she gave that example, her goal, her um her soul said 100K, right, as her goal. And she shared earlier, you know, she hasn't reached the 88K, right, yet. So, of course, her parts. And for, the, for those of you who are like, what parts? I teach a lot about parts therapy, parts work, and I will continue to this year. So, meaning, you know, these different parts of her that might be like, what? How can we up level to 100K? But blah, blah, all of that is normal, right? But what this is saying is that Jill committing to 100K is the is the treasure but it's not a trick it's not like well i'm going to commit to 100k but really i'm committing to 80k but i'm just gonna like tell myself i'm committing to 100k no that's not it's like really committing to the 100k goal like really saying that is my intention I don't know how in the heck it's gonna, I'm gonna do it yet. That's okay, because we don't know how to achieve our extraordinary goals. That's why they're extraordinary. Do not look to your past as evidence that you can't do it. It's if you knew how to do it, you would have achieved it already. So that's normal, that's okay. I'm gonna see. I'm just reading Deborah's here. Oh, I love that Deborah. <laughs> I love that you can everybody can read her comment about the the violet bouquet and I love when we have that response right when our soul gives us these extraordinary goals and we're like how in the heck am I gonna do that like um that's how you know you're in the so what do you need to achieve your extraordinary goal this is what you need you need a compelling reason your why 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 you cannot skip your compelling reason for example let's say one of your goals is i want to meditate every day in 2024 and your reason is like well i think that's a good idea that's what spiritual teachers do like i think you know it'll help me be calmer and more peaceful and you know i think it's my meditation teacher said i should do it i've read all these books about it i'm that's what my goal is going to be and then you do it for a week and then you suddenly have guests coming over and you're busier and now you don't have your, you know, the space where you used to meditate. And so you're like, well, I'm just going to skip a week while these guests are over and I'll restart then. No. <laughs> and I don't mean this as a judgment. It's like, because that reason might have not been compelling enough. When I started my meditation practice, my compelling reason was... I had so much, I was teaching and I, I know I have one of my colleagues when I was teaching back then, I was a teacher, my kids were little, I was going through a really intense divorce. I was experiencing really intense anxiety. Now I had a therapist and she was helping somewhat, but I just, it was a really intense time in my divorce proceedings. And so I received guidance from my soul that what I needed to do was wake up earlier which was a horrible thing to hear, you know, just like some of you were like, you know, because, you know, with five children, I have five, you know, they're older now, but five kids, all very close in age, myself mothering them. I already felt lacking in sleep. 
the last thing I wanted to hear was wake up earlier, but it was literally going to be the only time I could do it if I was going to be consistent. And my anxiety was so bad that my compelling reason was I will absolutely do that if that helps my anxiety. I will do that. I will wake up earlier, even though I already feel sleep deprived because this anxiety, I can't function. And I was already doing everything else I could do for it. And so that was a compelling reason. And I did it. And, and I look back and I think, how did I do that? But it, because it was that compelling. It was sometimes as humans, unfortunately, we need the alternative needs to be great suffering for us to be compelling. I'm not saying you do that, but everybody here, you've got to choose your compelling reason. For me nowadays, when I choose my goal, my compelling reason for me, following my soul's guidance is so compelling to me. I have such deep trust that that is absolutely what I need to do, that that's a compelling reason for me, that I will do it. Hence, I know this seems like a small little thing, not eating my delicious chocolate cake that is in the freezer that's gluten-free and vegan, homemade, right? You know, because that's compelling reason enough for me. So whatever your compelling reason, your why needs to be so so set, right? And, you know, I know some people give like really drastic examples, like, again, I just, I don't know why I'm stuck on the meditation example. It's just an easy example right now. But if you knew, you know, think of somebody you love dearly and you knew they were going to die if you didn't meditate every day for five minutes. I know this is kind of morbid, but let's just pretend you wouldn't think about it. You just knew you would know I'm going to meditate for five minutes doesn't matter who's over. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter if I'm sick. It doesn't matter if it's been the most frantic, busy day in the world. It doesn't matter if I have to do it outside. Nothing matters because I will do it five minutes a day because if I don't, this person that I love will die. Again, but that's the level of, it's like we're just committed. We just know we're going to do it no matter what, right? Like that's the commitment we want compelling reason, then that will lead to commitment, which leads to determination to keep going when it gets hard. Resilience is built every time it gets hard and you recommit. That's what resilience is. You fall off the horse, you get back up again, right? You plan the class, only two people showed up, you do it again. Or you plan the class, no one showed up and you keep going. Yes, it doesn't mean that you don't get sad or disappointed or all the things, but you keep going, right? That's the thing with extraordinary goals. There is going to be times when things don't go as planned. There just is. And so then the beautiful thing about resilience is that's what builds confidence in yourself. Right? And I know Deborah said this earlier. She's already achieved so many things. And I think for me, I still get scared just as she was sharing and many of you were sharing. But I have so much more confidence because I can look back on all the things I've committed to doing even if in the end I didn't meet the goal. So I've built confidence in myself. It doesn't mean I have it all the time. I totally have self-doubts, absolutely. But I've built that muscle. Okay, but what is the thing you have to commit to receive every day? It's receiving from your soul every day. This is like non-negotiable and I'll, I will talk about that a little more. Oh, we already did that. You're going to need courage, determination, like-hearted souls, human and or divine who are on this path with you. The reason I wrote this is I know there was a time in my life where I didn't have a lot of humans in my life who were like-minded. So I always appreciated when teachers would say, if you don't have that right now, if you don't have a community of support, that's okay. You have a community of divine support. The human support will come in time. Okay, so just in case anybody here is reading this and you're like, I don't have a community of like-minded souls. Everybody thinks I'm a weirdo or everybody, you know, doesn't understand me. That's okay. We, most of us have gone through that. I'm just, I think we're, yeah, I'll talk about this right now. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Well, I'm going to read Okay, Sophia said, OMG. Oh, maybe OMG to Deborah. Okay, I'm like, OMG to what? Okay, so actually, hold on. The screen is getting so... 
I honestly can't see who's on. So I'm part of me is like, maybe nobody's still on. I'm not sure. But okay. So I'm just going to tell you the invitations because I don't want to. Um, and then I'll open the space and do the cards and pull a name and know that for next masterclass, I'm scheduling longer time. Okay. So these are the special invitations for you. And I will, you, I will also email you this. I have the email ready to go out. But I wrote, I shared this in the last masterclass. These are for you if you want 2024 to be the best year yet, where you share your unique soul's medicine in an even more impactful way. You're feeling your soul guide you to take more of a service leadership role or birth a new business, healing modality, or creative project. You've recently retired or are retiring soon and all that stuff I say on there. You resonate with the mystical priestessy and magical. Priestessy is not an actual word, but I'm making it a word. So if you're not into that, which if you weren't, you probably wouldn't be here right now, but you feel drawn to divine beings like Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Isis, and so many others, okay? So first thing is, I think I still have a few slots, I think in January. So I'll put this link. You can schedule a free 60-minute breakthrough consultation. And this really is what I talked about before, a mass we need to implement and practice. And that is the thing where, that is why I have my coaches, because it's so easy when we're just left to our own brain to kind of spin out and go in circles. So if you want help, I would love to talk to you about that. And that'll be, you know, and, and really help you identify like, what's the biggest obstacle that's coming up for you right now to reach your extraordinary goal? And what's the simple solution? All right. So private Facebook group. I shared about this last time. It's called Answering Your Inner Calling in 2024. This is one of those goals that I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I will tell you. But, and I had to really, 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 really be with my soul and Mother Mary and really dig deep. Like, okay, what is my resistance? What is coming up for me? But now I'm on the other side because I knew if I did this, I was committing to it right? It's not just like a Facebook group. Like I was committing to creating this like community. It's a free group. It, you will, if you're interested in joining you, there are some kind of like agreement questions. You know, there are agreements that I ask you to read and agree to, and it's okay if you don't, that's fine. Just, you won't be accepted into the group. I know that sounds so awful, but the agreements are very lovely, right? The agreements are about being together in the beauty way. So you can do that. And it'll be an opportunity for me, you know, with these master classes, there's always so much more. And just it's very much easier for me to do these kind of impromptu quick lives to fill in the blanks of some things, the gaps of some of the things that I taught, to do some behind the scenes stuff that I think might be helpful for you. And of course, they'll be like inviting you to upcoming events. You'll be the first to hear of that. And if, and for you to share your celebrations and share questions, if I can answer, I will answer. It's not a coaching group. So I'm very clear on that. I'm if you're interested in that, you can set up a free breakthrough um, session with me. So it's not, but if you have a question, I will surely, you know, guide you or offer my guidance or say sign up for a breakthrough consultation. Right. So anyway, if you're interested in that, I would love for you to join. And the Sophia Circle journeys are starting next month. I am so excited about them. And these are really, really. It's once a month, so it's a year journey, Tuesday, one Tuesday a month. And it's just such a beautiful um, journey. I'm not going to go into it, but you can schedule a free 30-minute exploratory call. And I'll give you the link so you can read all the details and be like, ooh, I'm kind of interested. I want to ask Lisa more about it. And, and then I'll want to ask you about it to make sure that I feel you're ready for it, that this is for you. So, all right, let us go. Thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> Sophia, hence the reason I identify myself as a cosmic adventurer. Okay. Oh, awesome. All right, lovelies. Okay, let me go ahead and first pull the name that I have. And if you have any, Laura Ramirez, Feliz Luna Nueva. Yes. Well, I'm going to pull the names Laura Ramirez. I don't know if you can stay like a minute in case I pull your name out of here. Yes, Sophia is part of the Sophia Circle journey. And actually, Jill is also part of the Sophia Circle journey. I don't know if anybody else. Suzanne is part of the Sophia Circle journey. Wow, this is 
Like, awesome. And there's a couple of other people too. But... All right. So the way this works, I'm going to pull a name. If I pull your name and you're here live, you will receive a free uh, oracular card reading for the year. It was like, oh, that's what the, your soul, my soul wanted to gift you is like this 2024, like three card, like what's the theme of your year? I don't know, whatever questions come to me as I'm doing it. I, I deliver it. It's just my voice. Uh, it's like a five minute read. Sometimes I go over. So, all right. Okay, so beautiful divine mother, whoever is meant to receive this. Okay, and if I pull your name and you're not here, sorry, I'm gonna send you so much love and then I'm gonna put your name aside. Thank you so much, everyone. Patty, oh no, Patty, I think you had to leave early. I think Patty is not here yet. Patty, are you here? No, okay. Here we go. I think she had emailed me that she was going to have to leave early. Yep. Teresa. Teresa, are you here? <laughs> it's going to matter to name all these people that were here. This is the only way I can do it, everybody. This is the only way I can. Teresa, are you still here? I'm not sure if you are. Yes. Yay. Teresa, look at your name. All right, Teresa. So I always ask everybody to give me a week because I just kind of am with the energy, like what Oracle cards do I use and all of that stuff. But I'm so excited. So I'm going to email you uh, this by next Thursday. And I'm so excited that you got it. So thank you, lovely Teresa. And let's go ahead and just pull a card and see what is the message for everyone here. Oh, here we go. Look at her. We see, I feel like this is an aspect of our soul, everybody. It says, protection guardian, drop your shields. Isn't that so interesting? Remember Mother Mary said, come out of hiding. Drop your shields. We don't need them anymore because your soul is your shield. The Ascended Masters are your shields. I'm thinking of beautiful Joan of Arc right now. All right, look at this. Look at her, her peacock crown. Talk about coming out of hiding. Peacocks, you can't miss the peacock. In fact, when I was first doing the, the PowerPoint, I kept putting peacock feathers and then it just didn't work out. But peacock, look at you know her hand. Just There's so much here. And if you're wondering, I know some of you know, but if you're wondering what Oracle deck it is in case you don't know, Kyle Gray, Angels and Ancestors. You could probably also just look it up online and you might find the book information there if you're interested. All right, my dears, thank you so much for hanging in here. I'm going to definitely adjust the time next time. <laughs> so we have all the time that we need. And I'm just so, so delighted to be with you. I will send you the replay as soon as I can. It will have the links to everything I shared here. And if you're know someone who you think might be interested in the replay, feel free to just send it to them. You know, it will, the replay will end in a week. So then the link won't work after that. Uh, unless you're my private client. If you're my private client, I will happily send you the permanent link for that. All right. Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks again for hanging out. Bye. <laughs>